Wait a minute. Have you heard the strange tales of the Whistler? I'm the Whistler. Please don't leave me, Gerald. You mean so much to me, darling. Since you've been here, I've been the happiest woman in the world. You've nothing to fear. Andrew will never find out about us. Never. Sunday night, and again, CBS presents The Whistler. I, the whistler, know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, many secrets hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. And so I tell you tonight the amazing story of the thief. Catherine Ford sits in the library of the Ford Mansion and ponders over the past. For 12 years now, she has been the wife of Andrew Ford, wealthy manufacturer. Andrew Ford is now retired and spending his time and money collecting gems. He has a daughter, Alice, whose mother died a few years after Alice was born. Alice is a lovely girl. And Catherine wonders what her own child might have been like at the age of 20. Catherine had a child 20 years ago, a child she hasn't seen for 19 years. She never told Alice. Hello? This uh, Mrs. Ford? Yes, like to have a talk with you, Mrs. Ford. What about? I have some information that might interest you. Information? My name is Harry. Harry, Harry Jones. If you want to see me, come here to my home. Well, I could, but I'd rather, I'd rather you come to my place. My address is 217 East 20th Street, apartment 110. What's this about? I'll tell you when you get here. I... I have some good news for you. I'll not come till I know what your business is. Oh, this is no kidnapping trick. I've I've really got some news for you, interesting news. What about? About George Watson. George? Very well. I'll come right now. The address again? Uh, apartment 110-217 East 20th Street. <laughs> Oh, hello, Mrs. Ford. Come in. Well, what do you want, Mr. Jones? Recognize me, Mrs. Ford? Well, your face is certainly familiar, but I... Well, don't I... Don't I look a little like George Watson? Yes. Yes, you do. You do resemble George Watson. <laughs> well, I... I ought to. I'm... I'm his brother. His brother, Harry. What? His brother? Yes. Uh, don't you believe me? Where is George? Don't you know where he is, Mrs. Ford? Well, I... I imagined he was dead. Dead? Of course. After seven years, I... You you imagined it, but you weren't sure. No. Do you know where he is? I've got a pretty good idea, but he isn't dead. I was only 17 when I married George. I didn't know he was a safe cracker till after the baby was born, and he took the baby and disappeared. Then I learned he'd killed an officer in a robbery in Kansas City. I tried and tried to locate him, but he'd gotten away. Yes, well, Mrs. Ford, this doesn't really concern George. What about the baby? What do you know of him? You're married again, aren't you? To a millionaire. Yes, I've been married 12 years. Oh, by the way, did you ever get a divorce from George? No, I hadn't heard of him, and after seven years, a man is supposed to be dead. Did you get a court decision on that? No. I didn't know it was necessary. Oh, I'm sure it is necessary. Unless you've got a court decision, you're, well, you're still married to George. You'd, you'd better look into the matter. How long since you've seen George? Well, it's been a long time, but I'm sure he's alive. After he left you, he came to my place with the baby. He stayed with us for a while, and then he pulled this bank job and had to disappear. I, I heard from him a few times, but I haven't seen him. Where's my son? About a year ago, I found out who you were. Uh, now, <clears throat> well, things have been kind of tough for me lately, so I thought I'd, well, I'd get in touch with you and see if you couldn't do something for me. I, I've not been able to work for some time. I... Had an accident over a year ago. Where is my son? Oh, he's here, Mrs. Ford. Oh, may I see him? Oh, yes, yes. That's why I asked you to come here. <laughs> Do you call him Gerald? Yes, call him Jerry for short. Oh, he knows I'm his uncle. 
I've told him that his father is dead and that someday I'll find his mother, but... Now, I've, <clears throat> I've spent considerable money on Jerry, and... Well, now that I've found you, I thought you might like to take him over and sort of reimburse me a bit. Oh, of course, I'd be glad to. How much do you want? Well, George sent us very little, so I'd say 18 years at $400 a year would be to $7,200. Uh, <clears throat> would that be all right? $7,200? Well, I don't think I could get that sum all in a lump. I could certainly use it. I'm way in debt, doctors and so forth. But I could pay you as time goes on. All right. Uh, by the way, does your husband know about your marriage and your son? No, I've never told him. I can give you a thousand now. Oh, all right, of of course, uh, I'll expect you to take him off my hands now. I've told him all about this. I understand. But if I do take him to my place, how will I explain him to my husband? Oh, I've got that all figured out, and I've told Jerry about it. He understands. You tell your husband that your nephew was arriving in town, and he's going to live with you, and later on you can make your own plans. Very well. Oh, may I use this pen? I'll write a check. Oh, yes, yes. You should be grateful for this. You can give your son the things that he deserves. Very well. He'll be my nephew, George Watson. I'll pick him up here tomorrow. But first, I I must see him. Oh, certainly, certainly. Jerry! Jerry, come in here. Yes, Uncle Harry? Uh, come in, son. Come in. Jerry, Jerry, this is your mother. Yes, I, I know. I knew you were coming, Mother. Oh, Gerald, darling. Uh, Uncle Harry, she's beautiful. Are you sure? Oh, yes, yes, son. I'm sure she's your mother. And her name is Catherine. Looks just like George, doesn't he? Oh, yes, just like... Oh, Gerald. Gerald, my darling. I, I just can't believe it. You're so lovely. You're not at all like I imagined. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that... Oh, uh... darling, this is the happiest moment of my life. You don't know what it means, Gerald. For 19 long years... No, but... no, no. I understand, Mother. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, darling. Well... Now, what do we do? You understand my situation, Gerald. Yeah, I'm, I'm sort of a ghost out of the past. So I guess I'll, I'll have to be your cousin or your nephew or something. <laughs> then tomorrow I'll pick you up bag and baggage and take you to my place. You're my nephew from, well, we'll say Kansas City. Well, that's good, good. Kansas City. Oh, and darling, I'll try to make up for all those long years. I'll try so hard. I'll call for you at three and... We'll get some new clothes and everything. Oh, thanks. I could you sure you some. <laughs> oh, it's late. I must run along now. Could I see you a moment outside, Harry? Oh, I'll leave. I'll leave. Good night, Mother. Good night, darling. Here's your check for a thousand. Yes, I'll ma'am. give you more as soon as I can. Oh, believe me, I'm so grateful. He's a lovely boy. Twenty years. Doesn't seem possible. No, no. I'll, I'll see you now and again, Mrs. Ford. I'll expect a little as often as possible. Oh, yes, of course. I'll do my best. Yes, yes. You wouldn't want your husband to know. Why do you keep saying that? I don't like that. It, it sounds almost like blackmail. Oh, Mrs. Ford. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it that way. Good night. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Andrew Ford, Catherine's husband, sits in his library with his secretary, Paul Blake, discussing the recent purchase of a gem collection. Paul, a young man of 25, is in love with Andrew Ford's daughter, Alice. Well, Mr. Ford, I'd say you made a good deal on this collection. Some nice pieces here. Yes, I think so, too. You would have some of these things reset for Alice. Her birthday is coming up in a few weeks. Yes, I know. I bet you do. <laughs> I'd like to give this bracelet to Catherine, but she won't wear a speck of jewelry. That's strange, isn't it? Most women can't have enough, and they're always wanting more. Catherine is certainly different in that respect. Well, maybe someday I'll come across something she'll like. Well, better put these in the safe, Paul. Yes, sir. Oh, by the way, this is the first of the month. Did you have the combination of the safe changed? Well, no, they phoned that they'd have to postpone it for a few days, and maybe wouldn't get around till next month. Well, what's the reason for that? Short of help, they said. Well, I suppose it'll have to be all right. It was changed just 30 days ago, and you and I are the only ones who have it. Yes, and uh, I'd suggest, if I may, that you keep your copy of the numbers on your person. Well, what do you mean? Well, do you know where your copy is? Why, yes, of course. Uh, uh... Now, what did I do with that? <laughs> Here it is. I found it in the corner of the desk blotter. It's obviously a combination. Anyone would know that. Well, that is stupid of me. Why don't you memorize it and destroy it? Oh, I've tried, but we change them so often I get all mixed up. <laughs> I'll try to hang on to it. There are too many servants about and too many new ones coming and going. That's true. Well, I'll just be more careful in the future. 
I don't suppose anyone saw this guy. I hope not. I wish we could get it changed at once. Well, I've done my best, but I'll keep after them. Yes, do that, Paul. I'd feel better about it. Hello, am I intruding? Oh, yes, you are, Alice. <laughs> but I suppose there's nothing to be done about it. Oh, that's a fine thing to say. Put them away, Paul. What have you got there? None of your business. Oh, something new? Something you picked up to the auction? Never mind. Oh, let me see. Put them away, Paul. <laughs> She'll have them all on in five minutes and try to talk me out of them. <laughs> yes, sir. Sorry, Alice. <laughs> Well, all locked up. Well, I'll run along. Soon be time for dinner. Oh, by the way, are we having any guests this evening? Just one. Really? Who is it? Oh, I don't know. Catherine says it's a surprise. Well, I wonder who it is. <laughs> I can't imagine. Well, I'll see you both later. Yes, sir. What has Father bought now? Some more trinkets? Yes, a nice collection. Mm, you're very lovely tonight, Alice. Am I? Thank you. Uh, show me what he got. Oh, I can't do that. He wouldn't like it. All right, I can wait if you're going to be mean. Alice, why don't you let me speak to your father? What about? Why, about us, you and me. Go ahead, speak to him. <laughs> but I can't do that without your consent. You know I love you, but I can't ask him till you say the word. What word? What word? Well, that you'll marry me if your father gives his consent. You do love me, Alice. Paul, I, I don't know anyone I like better, but... But what? Well, I... I'm just not ready to get married yet. Oh, lots of girls get married before they're 20. But anyway, I'll keep on asking you. Do you mind? No, no, not at all. I I just want to be sure. Oh, hello, Alice. Oh, where's your father, Alice? Has he come in yet? Yes, Mother, and he's, he's in his room. Oh, uh, do you mind asking him to come down, Paul? Oh, certainly not, Mrs. Ford. Oh, before you go, Paul, I, I want you to meet my nephew. Alice, this is Gerald Watson. My stepdaughter, and this is Paul Blake. Well, it's a pleasure. How do you do? Your nephew? How nice. I didn't know you had a nephew, Mother. As a matter of fact, she'd forgotten about it herself. <laughs> you see, Alice, I've been living in the West. I just got in town this afternoon. Is Gerald a surprise guest, Mother? Yes, Alice. Gerald's going to stay with us until he gets settled here. Oh, how delightful. What do you plan to do? Oh, I, I don't know. I'll get into something. For a week or so, I'm just going to look the country over. Beautiful place here. Oh, wait till you see it all. There's everything here. Hunting, fishing, riding. <laughs> That's for me. Oh, great. We can have a lot of fun. How about a ride first thing in the morning? Before breakfast, the trails are gorgeous. All right, with you, Alice. <laughs> Mother, where on earth did you discover such a charming nephew? Uh, pardon me, I'll get Mr. Ford. Oh, Paul, I thought you'd gone for him. I'll just ring him on the house phone. Mr. Ford? Uh, Mrs. Ford would like you to come down to the library. Yes, now. Very well. Wait till you see my new horse, Jerry. Wonderful. And we have one you'll be crazy about. It's Weston, too. How long did you say you intended to stay? Well, I don't know. Maybe several weeks. Oh, marvelous. He's going to take an apartment in town. Uh, perhaps oh. I can help him locate something. I know of a few places that might interest I'll you. help you find something, Jerry. Oh, thanks. Do you like to dance, like Jerry? Like it. I'm crazy about oh, it. Oh, wonderful. I know the best places in town. Well, Kevin, what is it? What's happened? Oh, who's this? The surprise guest? Yes, Andrew. Just off the train. Uh, this is my nephew, Gerald Watson. Glad to know you, Mr. Ford. Nephew? Well, I'm glad to know you, Sam. Yeah, he, uh, he's my sister's son. Sister? Well, I didn't even... Yes, I, I had a sister. I lost track of her. You know how it is when families get separated. Well, you're quite welcome here, Gerald. Oh, thank you. Just on a visit, or are you planning to settle here? Oh, he's going to settle here, aren't you, Jerry? He's going to get into something. Well, maybe you could help him, Father. Hmm? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, perhaps I could. You'd better finish dressing, Andrew. Dinner will be ready in a few minutes. Oh, of course. Will you excuse me? I'll be down in a moment. I won't be five minutes. Come along, Jerry. I'll show you to the guest room. Do you like a sunny room in the morning? I know just the one. You'll love it. Anything you say, Alice, will delight me. You uh, say your nephew is just in from the West, Mrs. Ford? Yes, Paul. Why? Oh, nothing. I just asked. Charming fellow. <laughs> Two days pass. Three, four, then two weeks go by. Alice has helped Jerry find an apartment, but he still continues to spend most of his time at the Ford estate. Now, toward the end of the third week... He's been here almost three weeks, Alice. You've helped him find an apartment. You've gone riding, fishing, and swimming. I know that, Paul. You're gone early in the morning, and you're out with him every evening. Mm, Jerry is a lot of fun. He's great company. Yes, undoubtedly. But I don't have a chance. He has no work to do, no responsibilities, and I have to attend to a number of things during the day. I understand, Paul. You're quite busy. It's all right. I don't mind. I do. 
Do you have to spend every evening out with him? Oh, why, Paul, are you jealous? No. That is, well, you could give me a little time. What about this evening? We could go to... Oh, sorry, Paul. Jerry and I are going to the 17 Club. The 17 Club? Yes, there's quite an affair there tonight, a charity to do. I know. I bought tickets. I I was sure you'd go with me. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, Paul. I'd love to, but I've already promised Jerry. Hmm. Alice. Hmm? Just what is it about Jerry that's so attractive? Well, I, I don't know. I like you very much, too, Paul. I mean that. But with Jerry, uh, oh, I don't know. It's different, is that it? Oh, Paul, you're, you're always absorbed in your work. You and Father are forever poring over those collections. You never ride, never play golf, no swimming. You're such a serious sort of person. It, well, it, it makes me sad. Well, I have certain responsibilities. What can I do, run out on your father? Well, that's up to you, Paul. Oh, is it? I can take my choice, huh? Yes, Paul. You know, you're an awful stick in the mud. Very well, Alice. I'll take my choice. But I thought I meant more to you than this. You understand my position. There's nothing I can do about it. I'm sorry I brought the matter up. Good night. Good night, Paul. I hope you have a pleasant evening. Three more weeks pass. And Paul and Alice continue on unfriendly. Jerry still has found no business connection to his liking. And he manages to spend much of his time at the Ford estate. The richness of his environment seems to have gone to his head. He's been spending money as though it were water. And Catherine finds her allowance taxed to the limit. What is it, Gerald, darling? What's wrong? Come in and close the door. I've got to have a talk with you, Mother. Of course. Are you ill? No, not exactly. Oh, Gerald, what is it? Tell me. Uh, I've got to have some money. Right away. Money? But, darling, I've given you every cent I can for the present. And I've had to give your Uncle Harry quite a sum. I've got to have some money. But please be reasonable, Gerald. I'll let you have some as soon as I get it. When? Oh, in a week or so. The 15th. I've overdrawn my account now. You've just got to cut down, Gerald. I know. And that's the trouble. I, well, I, I tried to make things easier for you. I, I, I tried to make some quick money. What? You've been gambling, is that it? Yes, sir. Oh, I was sure I could make enough to meet my own expenses, but well, the, the brakes were all oh, against me. Jerry, why did you do it? Why? I told you why. It's a, it's a place Uncle Harry knew about. When was this? Over a week ago. It's a tough outfit, and now they're making it hot for me, threatening me if I don't pay by tomorrow noon. Threatening you? Did you write a check? No, I, I'm not that crazy. Well, then how can they threaten you? Jerry, you, you mean they threatened your life? Yes. This gambler that I owe to knows who I am. What? You mean he knows you're my son? No, I... I mean, he thinks I'm your nephew. Oh. So he figures I can get the money if I really have to. Oh, he's bluffing you. Tell him you'll have the money in, in two weeks. How much is it? $4,000. $4,000? Are you out of your mind? Oh, I know it sounds crazy, Mother, but... Well, I, I just got in deeper and deeper. $4,000? Oh, good heavens. I, I couldn't give you that much in less than two months. You've got to. He'll have me taken for a ride. I know him. $4,000. Well, how could I explain it to Andrew? Do you want me to be killed? How much time have you? He said tomorrow noon. But I can't possibly do that. Maybe it'll take some jewels to secure I have no jewels. I never wear jewels. The safe is filled with jewels. Filled with them. Doing nobody any good. That's ridiculous. Besides, I... I don't know the combination. Oh, Gerald, I don't know what to do. Well, I... Guess I'll just have to take the consequences... I'm stuck. Well, try to stall him. At least you can try. If he doesn't accept that, then I'll have to go to Andrew. Yeah, Andrew. He couldn't spend all his money if he tried. Okay. I'll see what I can do, but I, I don't think it'll work. Good night, Molly. The next day, Andrew Ford steps to the safe. And after a few twists of the dial, the door swings open. He takes a long velvet-covered case from the safe and places it on the desk, opens the lid. Great Scott. Bracelet, emerald ring. Paul! Paul, come here. What is it, Mr. Ford? What's wrong? Look in that case. The diamond bracelet is gone. Yes, and, and the emerald. And several other smaller pieces. Well, how do you like that? Five pieces gone. Is the combination set? Of course. 
can't understand this. Well, why do you suppose the other pieces were left? I wonder. Well, only you and I know the combination. That's right, Paul. And, and you certainly wouldn't steal your own jewels. No. Well, that sort of puts me in a very embarrassing position. Unless... Unless what? The card you left on your desk bearing the numbers. Do you suppose, well, that someone in the household did see that? You mean Alice or Catherine? Why, oh, that's ridiculous. Jerry wouldn't know because I found the card before he came here. Of course, one of the servants might have recognized the numbers as being a combination. Perhaps that's it. Well, it certainly wasn't forced. There's not a scratch on the door. Then someone knew the combination or was experienced in juggling tumblers by sound. I'd better call the police. No, 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 not, not just yet. But I want this cleared up. I didn't take them, and since I'm the only other person who was supposed to have the combination, I'm in a tough spot. Yes, you are indeed, Paul. But whoever took these things must be planning to dispose of them. Why? They've taken only the pieces that would be the easiest to dispose of. Not one stone would have to be cut. Well, then, why not have the police keep a watch on the pawn shops and the fences? Oh, all right. You attend to it. I don't suspect you, Paul, but the police will. And for the sake of your future, this will have to be cleared up. I understand that. I'll give a description to the robbery detail at once. In the meantime, I'll check all doors and windows to see if there's any evidence of the thief having forced an entrance. No, no, no. Don't... don't phone, Paul. There are too many extensions on this line. Oh, very well. I'll be back as soon as possible. <laughs> Paul hurries into town to make his report to police headquarters. Meantime, Andrew is inspecting every window and door of the mansion. Finding no clue of a forced entrance after two hours, Andrew decides to give up and return to the library. The library door is slightly ajar, and as he stops, he hears voices Mr. coming from within. Darling, I don't understand. Why must you leave me? I can't stay here forever. Why not? Oh, well, suppose Andrew finds out about us. How can he? He need never know. Yeah, but... He might. And the thought of it gives me the jitters. Oh, Gerald, please don't go. You mean so much to me, darling. Since you've been here, I've been the happiest woman in the world. Oh, we can meet now and then, out of town. Now and then, now and then. How can you say such a thing? I couldn't stand it. Oh, darling, don't go. I love you so much. I stayed here, and Andrew did find out. No telling what he might do. Why take a chance on losing all this wealth? I don't care about it. All I want is to have you near me always. I'd better go. I've got to. I'll come back in a month or so. Goodbye. Goodbye, darling. Aren't you even going to kiss me? Of course. Well, what's the meaning of all this? Andrew. So this is an example of the embrace of a nephew and aunt. Heard every word you've said in the past minute or so. Nephew. Do you expect me to believe that now? But Andrew, he's You're not... lying. I know what he means to you. I know what he is. I never mentioned a sister or a brother until he popped You're up. You're wrong, Andrew. You don't understand. In my you... own house under my very nose. I ought to kill the both of you. Get out. Get out, both of you. Andrew! Get out before I do something I'll be sorry for. Now, wait a minute. Get out, you sneaking little rat. Mr. Ford. Mr. Ford, we got them. Uh, this is Captain Ellison. They caught this man here trying to sell the bracelet. Who is this man, Captain? His name is Harry Watson. Where did you get this bracelet? Why, uh, why, a fellow gave it to me for a gambling debt. Gave it to you? I don't believe that. You're in with one of the servants here. Someone let you in and gave you the combination of that safe. That's crazy. Oh? Then you must have juggled the tumblers. There wasn't a mark on the door, not a scratch. I tell you what fellow gave me this bracelet. If you want to save your neck, you better start talking. Who was this fellow? That bracelet is stolen property. That means ten years, unless you talk. I didn't know it was stolen. Where's the rest of it? Ask him. He gave it to me. Gerald, oh, good heaven. He's lying. Where would I get it? He gave it to me to pay off a debt. I don't know where he got it from. Maybe maybe somebody gave it to him. So? So you're a thief as well, Gerald. Where did you get that combination? Now, wait. Gerald didn't have the combination. He didn't have the jewels. I took them. What? Why? This man, Watson, is lying. I gave the jewels to Watson myself. For what reason? To keep his mouth shut. That's a lie. He was blackmailing me. He knew something about me that I didn't care to have known. He called me to his home. I've been paying him ever since. I ran out of money, so when I learned the combination, I gave him some of the smaller jewels. That's where he got him. Gerald had nothing to do with I it. I didn't blackmail him. I can prove it by a canceled check. What did he know about you, Catherine? Well, did he really know something? Or are you just trying to protect this man, Gerald? I took them. I tell you what else matters. Catherine, I, I don't believe you. I paid Harry Watson. 
Because he found out that Gerald was my son. What? Your son? Yes. When I was a kid, I married George Watson, Harry's brother. Shortly after Gerald was born, I found out that George was a crook. He almost got caught in a vault robbery. He ran out of town and took the baby with him. Left Gerald with his brother, Harry, and I never heard about either of them again. I knew nothing of Harry until he called me. He says George is still around. But I thought that after seven years, a man is legally dead. He said, I'm not really married to you unless the court gave that decision. I didn't know that. Well, Watson, she has the check. You're stuck with blackmail. She's lying. I never mentioned blackmail. I never threatened her. And what's more... I didn't even say Jerry was her son. You did? I told her Jerry was her nephew. I asked her to help the kid out, give him a chance to do something. I've never done much for him, and I was, well, I was too old to do much now. Why, you... You said you raised him. I was even paying you for that. I did raise him, but I didn't say that he was your son, because he isn't. He's my son. I can prove it. Your son died a year after George left him with us. I can prove that. You're just trying to railroad me. You took those jewels and gave them to Jerry. Wait a minute. You opened that safe, Catherine? Yes. Then prove it. Step over there and open it now. Open it? Yes, open it. You see? You can't. No. And where did you get that combination, Jerry? I didn't have the combination. She did give them to me. And as far as I can see, all three of you are stuck. Oh, no, Captain. Jerry and Harry Watson are stuck, but not Catherine. Because Jerry can't prove he didn't know the combination, and Catherine can't prove she did. If Catherine thinks this boy is her son and she's trying to protect him, the only way she can prove she opened the safe is to open it now. And she'd do that if she possibly could. (laughs) And over the rest of those jewels, Jerry. All right. Here they are. I'm telling the truth about Jerry. Yes? Maybe you are now. But if Catherine was willing to sacrifice herself for this boy, then you must have convinced her that he was her son. You can take them away, Captain. I'll prefer charges in the morning. Yes, sir. Come on. Oh, by the way, Watson, I'd like to talk with your brother George. Well, George... George was killed by the police in Kansas City three weeks after his baby died. Oh? You see, Catherine, you've just been the... Well, you've just been the victim of a couple of clever schemers. Yes, but you're still wondering, aren't you, Catherine? You're wondering if Gerald really is your son. Wondering if Harry wasn't lying just now to save himself from charges of blackmail. But don't worry anymore. Harry is telling the truth. Jerry isn't your son. Your son and his father were both dead, dead many long years ago. But there's one thing you'd all like to know. How did Jerry get that combination? Well, Jerry had an eye on that safe, and he worked with it several times. Now, Paul knew this and deliberately left it unlocked one night knowing that Jerry would keep trying to open it. And he did. Then Paul put the police on Jerry's trail, and they followed through till Harry Watson tried to peddle the bracelet. Paul didn't do a thing, just forgot to lock the safe. Very simple. CBS has presented The Whistler. Original music for this production was composed and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. The Whistler is written and directed by J. Donald Wilson and originates from Columbia Square in Hollywood. Next Sunday night at 8.30... I, The Whistler, will return to tell you another unusual tale. Good night. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.